Oh no! Ah, oh, I have not thought this through, Kiralee. You're an idiot. G'day everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Kiralee, and on this channel I do tutorials and make stuff and talk about cosplay and costuming in general. Today I am in my pajamas, which means one thing, crafting time. So I'm about to start on a brand new costume. It is not a cosplay, it is a costume. It's a 1950s autumn look because here in Australia we are moving into autumn, uh, which is strange for a lot of you folks in the Northern Hemisphere because you're going into spring, but I hope that you enjoy this all the same. So I say that I'm going to be starting this costume today, but realistically, I've actually been working on it for the last couple of weeks. In fact, today is Valentine's Day and I think I have exactly one month to get it done. <laughs> Stress levels! I have actually been working on doing some bodice mock-ups for this and I actually did four different bodice mock-ups because I just wasn't happy with especially the first two. So all of these patterns were based off real 1950s patterns that I've got in my collection. Thanks, Nan. Uh, and this was the very first one. And it's this bodice that has the sleeve incorporated within the bodice, very similar to my Wonder cosplay. And it's got a little domed front, which I thought was really, really cute. However, I made it and it felt like I was wearing a sack. So I thought I'd try something else. The next pattern that I tried was this really, really cute, like, it looks like a peasant top, to be honest, and it's actually a proper top, it's not a bodice as such. And I made it into a bodice, and I think it's so super cute, like with the little puff sleeves and the yoke and everything. But I think it would be better as a top and not as a bodice. Um, so I was still not happy with that. So then what I decided to do was to pull out my dawn dress pattern and kind of play around with that as you know, that was inspired from a 1940s, 1950s kind of pattern. And I removed the centerpiece, which is kind of like, it, it has like a waist clencher kind of look to it, or kind of like, yeah, just a pointy waist thing. Anyway, have a look at my Christmas video if you want to see what I mean. Anyway, I kind of took that out and I extended the bodice down and then I did some more shaping with the darts. And it was about this time that I realized that something just wasn't quite right. I just wasn't getting the silhouette that is so iconic of the 1950s. And that's when I did more research and I figured out, oh, right, completely different undergarments. So I ended up making the bullet bra, which is currently on my dress form. And I also pulled out a 1956 girdle that I had in my closet. I, I don't know where it's from, I just, I have it. So once I did that and I put this bodice over the top, or rather the first version of this bodice, it all started making more sense. Um, but then I needed to make alterations to make this now fit over the relevant garments. So I ended up with my fourth mock-up. It is now at a point that I'm happy with it. So I'm about to rip this to pieces and actually cut out the real fabric. So that's exciting. There is another part to this costume, but I wanna make the dress first and then work on what will be a capelet uh, afterwards. So I have a capelet pattern already that I drafted up ages ago and I've got the, I've actually got a video of how to make it. So I'm gonna be using that and alter it, altering it slightly. <laughs> English is hard uh, because I actually found that they did wear little capelets during the 1950s and I think that will go perfectly with the look that I'm trying to achieve. So the main fabric that I will be making this dress and the, and the capelet out of is this beautiful purple. So I did a lot of research um, in regards to the 1950s and like autumn and winter colors and there was lots of greens and browns and like rusty orangey browns and there was also this purple and i have had this purple in my stash for a while now it's just a polyester taffeta which was kind of used in the 1950s as like evening wear kind of going out kind of wear so i thought that would be really nice and for the character that i'm going to be making it's such a perfect char um, character choice in terms of this color 
So that's going to be the main one. What I then plan on doing is doing some applique pieces on the bottom of it, like different leaves. So having different colored leaves circling around them. And at the moment, what I've done is I've pulled this brown silk, uh, what's kind of like brownie green. Yeah, it was used in my Yoda. So this is the scraps that I've got left over. And also this green uh, taffeta little remnant that I've got as well. And these two I thought would make really lovely leaves. I may also add in like a brownie orange if I've got something. I tried pulling some and I wasn't absolutely thrilled with it, but I might still try and see if I can find something. But even if it was just those two, they just go so beautifully together. And when you put them with the purple, they just look gorgeous. The three of them together look so good. Then I will also be utilizing some gold ribbon that I've pulled from my stash to kind of also connect the leaves together. And I will be creating like a little belt. Um, so I've got this cute little belt clip that I'm thinking that I'll be using as well that I will make probably a little brown belt um, to go around and then I'll also put the brown into the cuffs of the sleeves because I want to do a little puff sleeve. So yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Um, so I guess the next thing I need to do is I will cut out the fabric but before that I think I might do one last kind of fit test with the bodice make sure it's all fine. So I'll show you that. Okay, so please ignore all the mess that you're about to see in the background. I just wanted to show the very last, the fourth mock-up of this dress that I am about to create. So this is with my bullet bra on, but this top is actually compressing it a fair bit. It's okay, it's still quite pointy, so I'm quite happy about that. Um, and I've also got the girdle on, the 1956 girdle. And I have also pulled out my Nan's Vintage Petticoat, which has the most amount of swoosh and volume. So I think I am now in a pretty good position where I can begin cutting out the fabric. <sighs> That's what I have to deal with all the time. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about you, Mob. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have some lunch and then I'm going to begin cutting everything out. Okay, so just before I start cutting out, I've just pulled some more fabrics to play around with. So here's my normal, my purple and here's that green and the brownie green that I had before. I've also pulled out some other silk chipunis that I've got. So I've got this kind of brownie kind of woody color I suppose and then I've got this more uh, <laughs> true brown I don't know <laughs> mustard brown and then I've got this orange um, which kind of is more like a burnt orange so they're all kind of full kind of colors but I'm I'm not sure which ones to use I'm not sure if I could just keep it as that palette where there is the four kind of um, colors that kind of look like they kind of mold into each other or if I have that one as well, because that could work. I'm just not sure. I feel like those three might work better together because this just maybe has a slightly different color, like under toning of the color, I think. I might get a second opinion from my husband because he's an art teacher. <laughs> um, yeah. Because I, I kind of would like to have some brighter colors in there as well and really cap really really get those autumn colors in there as well Hmm. Oh, well that can come later anyway G'day and welcome to the voiceover Once I had ripped the bodice mock-up apart I pinned and cut out the purple twice once from the outer fabric and once for the lining I then measured marked and cut out a simple circle skirt Let me know in the comments if you would like to know how to make a circle skirt all right, so check in time. I managed to get everything that I needed to get cut, cut. Um, so I've got the front and back pieces of the bodice here. I've also cut out sleeves. I decided to actually go with a straight sleeve and I've actually made it a shortened version of my sleeve block. Um, hopefully this works. And I have the skirt hanging up behind me. So I'm gonna let that 
sit there for at least 24 hours um, so that it can drop if there's any droppage to it uh, and then I'll trim that off. Um, when I've used this kind of taffeta before in a different colour there was no dropping whatsoever. So hopefully that's the same and that will make my life so much easier. But for now, I think I'm going to stop there because I need to go get ready because, like I said, I think at the beginning of this, today is Valentine's Day and uh, I've got a little bit of a date with my husband planned, so gotta go do that. It's the next day now and it's time to prep the bodice pieces. And the first thing we need to do is mark, pin and sew in those darts at the front and the back before giving it a good press with the iron. And just in case you were wondering, I'm actually using a heat erasable pen. This has been fabulous and has made my life so much easier with marking fabric. G'day. Hi. So it's now the following sad day and I really haven't done much this week because it was my first day at my new job. Plus also the day that I had off, I was doing a whole lot of admin, setting up a brand new, uh, well, company. Kirali Cosplay is now a company. <laughs> Um, so there'll probably be a video about that at some point. Anyway, uh, I have not done much sewing on this one, but I am here to rectify that and I need to get cracking on this. So what I need to do next is I need to actually sew the backs to the fronts of this uh, and then put the flip the lining and the fashion fabrics out on themselves and then I want to do some overlocking on the um, the the waist edge and then I will follow the same kind of process for the skirt so yeah sorry the skirt <laughs> there it is it's still hanging up see I told you it'd be hanging out more than 24 hours so I've got a fair bit of work to do it would be really nice if um, by the end of this weekend I have some kind of wearable garment um, yeah, I think I'm actually going to put the, the whole dress together and then do the uppercase afterwards, which is a little bit backwards because usually you do the uppercase while it's all flat and then do it, but because it's only on the bottom of a circle skirt, it's not going to make too much of a difference, <laughs> she says, um, to whether it's, it's done or it is still in pieces. So that's what I'm going to get on to now. And the dogs are killing themselves in the background. What are you doing? What are you doing? Come here. Some of you love dog content. Here's some dog content for you. Say hello, Lacey. You know. Oh, you're so camera shy now. All right, to work. seams open before I connect them together. Uh, I hate ironing. After ironing the seams, I laid the outer fabric and lining fabric right sides together and pinned along the necklines, leaving the armhole and shoulder seam free. I then sewed these lines together. Don't you absolutely hate it when you're mid sewing and your bobbin runs out? Oh well, I'm going to do this before I sew up the rest of this neckline, but you've already seen some of that, so I probably won't film the rest of that sewing. Next up, I clipped the corners of the neckline and turned it right side out. Then I went around the waist, back and armholes and pinned the two layers together to stop it from shifting as I went around these with the overlocker. All right, so update time. What I've done is I have overlocked all of the seams that are going to be kind of exposed for a lack of a better word. Um, so there could be potential rubbing against my skin or anything like that. So I don't want it to fray because this fabric frays a whole lot. So that's all done. So all I need to do now for the bodice is to sew up the shoulder seams and then it will be good to go to add the sleeves, which I also need to do up, and uh, then eventually the skirt, which I have also started pinning together. So I'm going to do French seams on the two side seams, and then I'll do the back seam 
as just a normal stitch so that that way I can connect it to the bodice and just put a zip in and not fill around with it too much. So I'm going to do sew all those that I've got pinned at the moment. Um, then what I'm going to do is once I have this uh, sewn together, I do need to figure out the cuff um, of this. So I will do that and maybe at the same time I will cut out the corresponding belt that will match. So that's the plan and that's what we're going to do next. But first, let's sew up those shoulder seams, skirt side seams and the sleeves. So this is where we're up to. As you can see, the dress is kind of forming. I still have the sleeves over here because I need to do the cuffs. I need a couple cuffs next. But I like to get at this stage to get it on. When I get to this stage, I like to chuck it on the dress form uh, to see how it's all looking. And yeah, I'm really, really happy with that. It's really already giving me that really 1950s silhouette, which I'm super happy about. Um, so the next thing I think I'll do is the sleeves, get that sorted at the main same time, might very well, you know, make the belt, why not? Um, and then once that's done, I will be able to attach the sleeves to the bodice and then the bodice to the skirt and then put the zip on. And then once that's all done, then I can do the hem because I'll be able to try it all on with, with, the, um, with the petticoat and the girdle and the uh, <laughs> pointy boob bullet bra. Uh, and then see, okay, well, how long is it? How, you know, how much do I need to take off? All that kind of stuff. So one step at a time, but we're getting there. Now onto the cuff. I cut a strip of fabric that was the same length as the bottom of the sleeve and pressed one of the edges in to make my life easier when it came to whip stitching later. I then pinned and sewed that down. I then turned the fabric in on itself and pinned down the cuff on the inside, enclosing the raw edge of the sleeve. And I whip stitched that into place. Once the sleeves were prepped, it was time to pin them into the bodice, sew, and then clip the curves. Oh, how I am about to regret all of this. But first, let's talk about the belt. Okay, so let me explain where I'm at. So I am just working out the belt side of things. So I want it to look quite taut. And I have these cool little, this cool little belt buckle, um, which I thought would be really, really nice and go well with the costume. So there's that. So I'm going to use this fabric as it's probably the one that goes really nicely with the purple. Um, so I'm going to use that as the outer fabric. However, I need it to be quite stiff. So I've got this Petersham uh, tape here, which is about the right size to be threaded through those little hooks there, those little bars. And the thing is, though, is this, this has no stretch which is what i want for the majority of it however i've got to get it around me so what i was thinking is that i would add a little piece of elastic just at the back wink so that this will give a little bit of spring to it um, and just make the belt a little bit easier to get on and off so the first thing i'm going to do is cut this in half okay and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to sew that to there and that one to that one and then what I'll do is from there, I'll figure out how wide I need the fabric to be and how much I'm gonna cut out. Yeah, for some reason, the maths is just not happening in my head. Actually, I could probably figure it out now. All right, I'm gonna figure it out now and then I'll just cut it. <laughs> Once the belt was all cut out, it was time to pin and sew the outside together with a small opening in the centre back. I also sewed the Petersham tape to the elastic. I then sewed the ends of the Petersham tape to the ends of the inside of the belt before turning the belt right side out. It was a little bit fiddly, but it worked out well. Then it was just a matter of adding the closure and sewing down the edges to lock it into place. Lastly, it was just a matter of slip stitching the opening at the back. <sighs> okay, so I decided to give the bodice a bit of a try on before I attach the skirt. And the bodice and the belt actually really nice, fitting really well. The sleeves, however, not so much. Um, 
there is just not enough space. I didn't cut it with enough space up here. So I'm going to take the sleeves off, which sucks because of the fact that I've cut into the fabric. <laughs> That's going to be fun to re-sew. Um, like, I like the length of it, and I also like the little cuff, and the width down at the bottom is good. It's just, I think I should have listened to my gut at the very start and gone with a puff sleeve. Oh well, live and learn. So I'm gonna re take these out, recut them, and make it happen. Oh well, it's okay. It's it, it's able to be fixed, and you know, I have Taffeta for support. <laughs> She's just as sad about this as I am. Or she wants me to throw a crocodile. Eh, go get it. No. I'm just not winning on any front today. And with that, the unpicking commenced. I got my sleeve block and slashed it to create a little puff sleeve. I'm not going to show you the construction of the new sleeve because it was basically all the steps you've just seen, with a little bit of extra colourful language thrown in for good measure. Let's now move on to happier times, the skirt. I finished doing the French seams on the sides and then pinned and sewed the skirt to the bodice. And of course, I had to chuck it on my dress form. Good evening. So, I am just about to go to bed after a somewhat productive day, with a fair bit of procrastination, I may add, um, and some annoyance at certain sleeves. You know what you did. Actually, <laughs> you know what you did. Anyway, um, I have the dress mostly together now, um, at least the base of it. So tomorrow I need to do the back zipper and the hem, and then from there I can start plan planning out the appliques. At this stage, I'm not even sure I'm, if I'm going to do the capelet anymore. I've just kept on thinking about it and like the little skit that has to go with it, and I'm just not sure it's going to work out <laughs> as such. But um, I do need to give the, eye, the, the skirt a good iron because it's a little bit crinkled. Um, but yeah, I think it's turning out really quite cute. Um, the little cuffs, I, I don't know if you can really see it in this shot, but they are super cute. Like just, it's just this little pop of brown that ties in the belt. It's, I'm very happy with it. So the sleeves, although I made them puff, um, they're a very, very mild puff. It still looks quite like a straight sleeve, so I'm very happy with that as well. So my overall vision is still coming together nicely, so I'm happy. But I'm also very tired, so I'm going to bed and I'll see you in the morning. Bye! Morning came, and to welcome in the new day, I did up the back seam and chucked in the zip. We have the dress on for the proper fit and I'm really, really happy with how it's looking. Please excuse uh, the mess. I need to put Wonder and Ariel away, but ah! so um, the dress length is almost perfect. Let me like step back. So it falls just below my knee, which is where I would like it to be. Um, and so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a really, really narrow hem and then I can start the applique of the leaves, which I'm very, very excited about. Um, yeah, I think the overall shape is really, really cute. Uh, the belt is a tiny bit loose, but that is a-okay because it is sitting where it's needing to be sat and yeah. I'm just overall feeling really, really happy with this. It's got such a lovely swoosh to it that like turning is so much fun. Spinning, spinning is so much fun. So yes, the only thing is, is that I've got to get used to wearing this like girdle <laughs> uh, because it is definitely cinching me in at the waist and giving me a waist, which is nice because I'm not used to that. But yes, the bullet bra is being quite flattened um, just because of how, um, I guess, how tight the bodice is. But it's still, still there. Still got the somewhat pointy boobs rather than, you know, curved boobs. So yeah, I'm still happy with it. it yeah, I'm, I'm feeling positive. Can you pick that up? All right. 
time to take this off and take the girdle and start breathing. Whoo! And when I say narrow him, I mean rolled him sort of narrow him. I love doing a good rolled him. So just before I pop off to bed, I thought that I would jump on here and show you something that I have been working on this evening. And that is these little cutouts, the templates, if you like, of some leaves that I have found online. <laughs> you dag. Um, so I just wanted to see what the sizing were like. Um, I was tossing up whether I should use one or two different sizes and I think I am going to go with the two different sizes so basically the next step for me not tonight obviously but the next step will be to use these templates draw them out on the applique um, material and then iron that onto the diff five different um, silks and taffetas that I have that I'm planning on using um, and then cut them out and then applicate them onto the dress. So I'm very excited about that. But for now, it's bedtime and taffeta here agrees. I decided to use Heat and Bond Ultra Hold, sometimes referred to as No So as I didn't want to go around the edges and satin stitch that down because it would show through on the other side of the skirt. This is super easy to use. Just grab the template and trace around it, making sure you flip them over to get some going the other way too. But I wonder, can you already see a mistake that I'm making? I use three different colored pens to separate the different leaves into five groups for cutting purposes. I thought I was being so smart. I ironed my fabric like the good costumer that I am before I laid the applique down. I will now leave the sound on so you can hear my real reaction. Cameo voices here are from Jalea Ward and The Wasted Coat, who is the partner in crime to Liam. I'll leave their channels below in the description. Please check them out for some more awesome costuming content. Oh no! Ah. Oh. Okay. I have not thought this through, Kiralee. You're an idiot. Have you drawn it on the wrong side? No, I drew it on the right side. But I did it with heat erasable pen. Oh no! Wow, I'm an idiot. Wow. Oh well. That's a video worthy mistake, let's face it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I just spent all that time. Oh well, now I'm gonna have to go over all of them and retrace them. Awesome. Oh my god. Oh my god. Ah, no! I'm only laughing because it is so what I do. Oh lord. Luckily, the lines were still a little bit visible, so I was able to retrace the leaves, but gosh darn it, did it suck. Yes, yes it did. But at least I had good company. And then finally, I was able to cut the leaves out. Okay, so it is the next day after my lovely ironing adventure. Can't believe I did that. Um, and all of the leaves are now cut out. So I have the gorgeous orange. I have the olive green. I have the green taffeta. The I'm kind of scorched a little bit on the green taffeta, but I think it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Call it characterization. Uh, then we've got this very lovely rust kind of, of color. And then we've got brown. I guess you could say. So I've got the five different colored leaves and I've got um, a total of eight each. So that is maths, 40. Um, so <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm gonna have some lunch and then what I'm gonna do is I am going to pin them around the skirt, see if it's enough, hopefully it is. Um, otherwise I'll need to make some more. And it was time for a check and I swear I was trying to tell my everything needs to be balanced mind to be quiet 
but we got to a happy place finally. And then it was just a case of peeling off the heat and bond backing and ironing those bad boys into place. And with that, the dress was complete. So now, as always, it's time for my final thoughts on the outfit. So the very first thing is, of course, it is super swooshy and I love a good swoosh. So I guess that means I love this dress. So the colors I am absolutely in love with. This is a little bit outside of my normal palette that I would tend to gravitate towards, but I really, really love the purple and then the browns and the oranges tying in together. It gives a real autumn vibe to it. The only thing that I'm slightly disappointed in is a little bit of the sleeves because they're still a tiny bit tight, but they're enough to move around in. So it's all fine. But also the fact that my bullet bra is no longer fully bulleted. <laughs> But that's okay. I think that I can go out in public and not feel self-conscious, so that's a win. I decided not to use the gold ribbon because when I held it against the leaves and the dress, it really kind of made your eye be drawn to that gold ribbon. And unfortunately, it just kind of took away from the autumn vibes that I already had going on with this dress. So I decided to leave it out. And as for the capelet, I came to the conclusion that I didn't need it. And that's because I am going for a particular look with this costume. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure you give me a like and a little bit of a comment below, and I'll see you all next time. Bye. You were such a good co-star. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. Yeah, yeah.